Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about the data science experience and workload in Microsoft Fabric, what it is, what it includes, what it means for data scientists. Uh, and we are going to have a look at different components of it and how it works with the rest of Microsoft Fabric. Let's go and check it out. Let's start with an introduction to Microsoft Fabric. What is Microsoft Fabric? Microsoft Fabric is a software as a service uh, offering uh, from Microsoft for analytics, for all requirements of analytics from data integration, data warehousing, uh, business intelligence, uh, and data science is one of those parts. So in this video, we are going to talk about that in particular. But before talking about data science in Microsoft Fabric, let's talk about data science in general. What is data science. Uh, so data science is a process of um, discovering the data, analyzing the data, exploring the data, uh, find out patterns in the data that would work on a similar data with similar factors to the current data so that then you can apply these patterns and get business outcome for it. Uh, for example, you might have a data for some of your customers purchasing some of the products. Uh, a data science process can be finding out, uh, can be a definition of a problem that uh, what products customers purchase together. Then you go and explore the data, find out what data you've got. You uh, try to create a data model and pattern that understands it and analyze it and applies it on your, apply it on your test data, check the validity of it. It. And then once it is valid um, above the threshold that you require, then you can apply it on some uh, potential um, new data to uh, to be able to build, for example, a recommendation system that says, for example, this customer that purchased this product, we are going to recommend him or her to purchase this new product as well. So that's data science in general. And data science is a process like what you see in this slide. Uh, the process usually starts with defining a problem. For example, that uh, problem uh, that I mentioned, for example, when a customer purchased something, we want to uh, suggest the customer, recommend the customer what other things uh, is um, recommended for him or her to purchase. So problem definition. Then there's a process of data discovery, data exploration, finding out what columns you have, what data you have, what is the quality of the data, uh, going and checking this data. Um, and then after that is the time that you create the machine learning model and experiment. This is a process of defining pattern uh, based on different machine learning algorithms. You apply uh, the algorithm on the data with some variables and changing the values of variables. And you, uh, apply train, uh, you apply training data sets for this from the existing data that you have. And part of it, you keep it for testing so that you can compare the result with the actual, with the current data that that you have and if um, the success rate of the algorithm and the model is let's say above whatever threshold that you consider 70%, 80%, 90%, whatever it is. And uh, then um, so you go through some circles to get to that point. Once you get to that point, then you can operationalize this so that you can then use this model on an actual data and use it of data that you haven't applied machine learning algorithm on it uh, or haven't trained trained on it. You apply this using uh, functions to predict and then um, the outcome of that you either store it somewhere or use uh, a visualization tool, a business intelligence tool to uh, to generate some insight out of it. And that then would lead to more questions, more problem definitions. So the cycle would go back to the problem definition and this goes on and on. So this is the data science process, regardless of the technology. It's not for Microsoft, it's not for IBM, it's not for any specific vendor. All of them, uh, like when you have a data scientist wants, want to do a data science project, they usually follow this process. Now, how this works with uh, Microsoft Fabric, or let's say how Microsoft Fabric does the data science. So Microsoft Fabric provides a set of 
tools and uh, features and services and languages that we are going to talk about and what they do. First, let's talk about the tools. So these are things that would enable a data scientist to do their process of data science. So, uh, so these tools that I'm going to talk about here are Notebook, Data Wrangler, Power BI, Vir Visual Studio Code. Of course, this video is not um, and the time for this video is not enough to go through demoing each of these. So this video wouldn't have any demos. I'm just talking about these features, but in future videos, I'll demonstrate some of these. Although some of these, I already have videos about it. So you can go and check it out. Uh, the first one is Notebook. Notebook is a place that you can, uh, as a data scientist, you can go and use some of the languages, Python, Spark, Scala, um, R, uh, Spark SQL, use these languages to um, to do your work. And this is not for a specific part of the mm, data science process. This can be from uh, the data discovery process. There are functions, library functions, um, libraries in uh, Python, such as pandas that work with the data. You can read the data, you can uh, analyze it. Um, there are even um, simple visualizations in the notebook that helps you to understand the data from the data exploration process, even to building the data model. Uh, there are functions using these languages, um, libraries using these languages that you can use um, to create them. Mm, model, machine learning model to train it, and then finally to run it, then predict based on it. Uh, so notebook can be um, used for all parts of this process, even to uh, store the data at the end into a lake house or something like that. So notebook is an essential tool for a data scientist. One of the main um, features of that is that you can use four different languages in this notebook, which I explained it in another video. So it's a really powerful environment to work with, and it's the most common used environment for a data scientist. Another thing is Data Wrangler. Data Wrangler is a data preparation, data exploration um, tool. Now, this is a graphical interface. It's not like notebook that you have to write the code. Uh, in order to use it, your data should be loaded into a data frame using pandas libraries in Python. I have explained it in another video um, with the demo of Data Wrangler. You can go and check it out. Uh, but essentially what it does, this graphical interface helps the data scientist to generate some of the Python code. Like for example, I want these two columns to be grouping the data. Then after that, I want the mean of the other column based on this grouping. So you do that graphically and then this generates the Python code so that you can add it in the notebook and execute it through the part of your data science process. So this is another tool that helps you on that. Of course, Power BI is a tool not for data scientists, but also for, um, for um, um, not for data analysts, but also for data scientists. As a data scientist, I can actually use Power BI to connect to the lake house that might include uh, the outcome of my machine learning process and visualize it. And when Power BI connects to a lake house, it uses the direct lake feature, which uh, speed up the performance of the Power BI as well, which I explained it in, again in another video. Power BI itself is a powerful visualization tool, uh, but it also has a lot of uh, model features uh, around it for business uh, analysis around it. Uh, another thing is that you can use VS Code or some of the other uh, code editors to write your code as well. Inside Microsoft Fabric, inside Notebook, for example, there are ways that you can open your code in Visual Studio Code. Uh, so those are tools. Um, some of those tools would use some languages. What are the languages that you can use? There are four languages that you can use to write your code, especially in the notebook environment. Uh, Python, Scala, R, and Spark SQL. These are not, like for example, Spark R is not exactly as R, it's like a lightweight version of R, uh, but still you can manage a lot of things. So what are these languages? This is definitely a big subject. You would require like courses to follow for each of these. Uh, 
Uh, but in general, R is a statistical language. It's a language helpful for um, doing some statistics on your data, and it has also machine learning uh, algorithms on it. But Python has more machine learning features, and especially on deep learning area, uh, with lots of libraries, uh, so that you can use Scala is for uh, high scale scalability features added to your data. And of course, Spark SQL is part of like the SQL um, um, it's it's like a lightweight version of the SQL where you can do all your data querying uh, and manipulation using that where you can actually query the data in all ways possible because SQL is quite powerful language for uh, relational data. So a combination of these four languages would give a data scientist a good uh, coverage of all aspects of data science from uh, data science from the data, data exploration all the way to operationalizing this and getting insight out of the data. Uh, in addition to languages, there are fabric items or objects that you can use in this process. Of course, Lake House is a place that you can store uh, data, model and experiments are also parts of this um, this data science project. So Lake House is a place that you can store the structure or unstructured data. It doesn't mean that whatever you want to do in your model have to be stored in Lakehouse, but Lakehouse is a good place to store it, especially when you want to um, use notebook to get data from it. These two works really nicely with each other. You can even after finishing your work in notebook, you can store that data back into the Lakehouse as a parquet file or as a table, uh, whatever format you want. Pandas library has a lot of um, functions to read and write which can help you in that uh, case. And of course, having data in Lakehouse would, uh, would have some benefits for the Power BI visualization at the end because it would have uh, the direct lake feature of it. Uh, model or machine learning model is a place that you create a... Um, a process, or you can call it a process, an object, a file, whatever you call it. This is where you define a pattern um, that can be found in your data. So you play with different algorithms, for example, decision tree, uh, clustering, you play with different variables in these algorithms, apply it on your data, uh, which is called training the algorithm. Uh, you keep part of the data as test data, you compare the test data results, um, uh, the test data with the results generated from the training data so that you can compare uh, how this works. For example, you might find for, for a specific problem, clustering would work better than um, um, some other algorithm. So you play with this, changing, changing the variables. Part of the machine learning process is this. This is a big part. Uh, after getting to the certain stage, that is where you can then use this model to run on uh, uh, on an actual data. And uh, the thing about building the model in here is that the environment used for this is code-based environment. It's basically the notebook uh, with those languages that I mentioned. It's not like Azure Machine Learning that you had the Azure Machine Learning Studio, uh, which was a graphical user interface. Uh, you can't use that inside Fabric at the moment. So your uh, place to do this modeling would be using the notebook and scripting. Experiment. Consider experiment like a project. If you consider model as a program, then experiment is like the project that surrounds it. So, uh, so basically, this means that um, it includes the executions, the runs, the model itself, logging, monitoring, everything that is required for that uh, piece of project for the machine learning model to run. This works with the MLflow, basically, templates, which provides all of these features around uh, monitoring and logging. This is built in, uh, the MLflow built in uh, Microsoft Fabric, so you want to really uh, feel that you are working with MLflow that is all uh, added inside the fabric. So you feel that you are working with basically um, experiments in Microsoft Fabric, which is based on the MLflow experiments. Uh, so experiments and models work really closely to each other. I'll explain that in another video in the demo how they work. 
Uh, the last thing I want to mention here, this is not a fabric item, it's not an object, but it is a really important thing in uh, data science relationship with Power BI. That is why I mention it here. Um, so one of, the, um, one of the things that would be really beneficial for a data scientist is to be able to use the data analyst's outcome. Uh, a data analyst usually use Power BI to understand, uh, to connect to the data, to apply some business uh, logics um, using measures, calculations on top of it, and analyze that data. And usually data analyst has a business knowledge that is added inside that Power BI data set or whatever it is. Now, instead of data scientists going and reinventing the wheel and building those business logics in their uh, data science model, it would be better if they can um, connect to that Power BI dataset directly and build the model on top of that Power BI dataset with all business logics around it. Uh, and that is what the semantic link is actually doing. Semantic link would enable the data scientists to build the model on top of the Power BI dataset instead of like exporting it and, and importing it or rebuilding it. Uh, that's one side of it. The other side of it is that the output of that data science process can be stored as, I don't know, Parquet files or uh, data files inside of one lake, which is part of the uh, lake house, which is the storage part of the lake house, and then Power BI would have direct link, link direct lake link to it. So this is like a, a cycle that gives ability on both sides to use each other's output. This is really important things which I'm going to explain in another video later. So in short, what is um, what is the data science part of Microsoft Fabric? Uh, you had it in this video. This is a set of tools, features, uh, fabric items, languages that helps the data scientists to go through different aspects of data science process, data exploration, uh, discovery, uh, machine learning model, training it, testing it, and operationalizing it. Uh, and then gaining insight out of it. This includes tools such as Data Wrangler, Notebook, includes languages such as Python, uh, Spark R, Scala, um, Spark SQL, and it also includes fabric items such as model experiments uh, in combination with Lake House. And Semantic Link is one of the things that you have to uh, really notice because it is important in this process. I'm going to explain uh, this as a video of getting started with data science in another video later. Until that video, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.